Hello everyone, I'm Joshua. And I'm Abe. And I'm Amanda. I'm Jay. And I'm Josh too. Hello everyone, Joshua Myers here. And today I'm going to be revealing Stuart Little from 1999. It's a big world. But there's someone little who sees it just like you do. Stuart Little. I'm not your pet. Please, please, please. Please. Now playing in theaters everywhere. Stuart Little stars Michael J. Fox, Gina Davis, Hugh Laurie, Nathan Lane, and is directed by Rob McHoff. I think I'm saying that right. The plot of Stuart Little is when the Little family adopt an adorable, spunky boy named Stuart who looks an awful lot like a mouse, Mr. and Mrs. Little fall in love with Stuart right away, but their older son George isn't so sure, based on the book with, by the same name written by E.B. White. What are my positives with Stuart Little? Honestly, for me, you know, I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong for kids in this movie, and, you know, some of the set design isn't bad, actually. Uh, I will say, it is kind of cool to see Stuart, you know, like, somebody that small, interacting with, you know, st everyday stuff, like, you know, sitting in a bed, or, like, an adult-sized bed, or, you know, with the boats and stuff like that, you know, it's fine, and the effects actually aren't that bad for that. Also, this film does have offered what did offer me a couple giggles here and there, but that's it, really. And, you know, honestly, I think the actors here aren't that bad, you know, and the characters come off as really nice, and it's just a nice movie overall, as far as, you know, the tone goes. That's going to be it for my positives. Why are my negatives with Stuart Little? Honestly, for me, sad to say it because I did love this movie as a kid but you know so watching it now as an adult and trying to analyze it and that I did notice a ton of issues with this movie for one you know I think this film played it off too safe it's like what could be safe and marketable this you know the final product of the film it's safe it's marketable when especially I did research on the original book and the original book is much more insane and nonsensical, but I think it would have made some more sense on certain stuff. Like, for example, I heard in the book, uh, Stuart Little isn't a mouse. He's actually a human who just looks like a mouse. And he was actually popped out like that. Very bizarre, but at least would have made more sense in this film, because... Like, I found it very weird that, you know, nobody was like, Holy crap, a doggy anthropomorphic mouse, you know? Like, something like that, you know? They just seemed like, huh, this is an everyday occurrence. It would at least, you know, him being actually human, but looked like a mouse and was actually popped out that way and wasn't adopted, that would have at least made that situation make more sense. I at least wish they kept that in the film version, at least. Now, here's the thing. I've never read the original book. So, again, I did research on the original book prior to this. But I didn't even know for the longest time this was based on a book. But that's just a portion of the insanity from what I've understood of the original book. Also, some of the voice acting, like I said, while not bad, it just came off as distracting. Like, for example, especially from, you know, uh, Stuart Little and their cat, Snowbell, I, you know, for me, when I was hearing their voices, like hearing Michael J. Fox as Stuart Little and uh, Nathan Lane as Snowbell, all I could hear, all I could see in my head was Marty McFly and Timon. From the Lion King. That's all who, what I could see when hearing those voices. So immediately it was really distracting. I wish they could have got some newcomers or something, you know, some unknowns to voice these characters so that 
it wouldn't be so distracting and maybe they could fit into their characters much better. Now again, they didn't do a bad job, it's just, it was so distracting. Also, there's so many cliches in this movie, you know, and there's even some lines of dialogue that just doesn't make sense. Like, like there's a line in here, like, that the littles always say that I never really got, like, it's when they brought Stuart first to their home and it's repeated throughout the movie at some points, it's like, like, talking about their house and that and basically saying, you know, like, a little could always find this house even if they don't know how to find it. And I'm like, or something like that. And I'm like, how does that even work? How does that make sense? And when doing some more research into this movie, I'm like, oh, that's, that's why. That's why some of this stuff doesn't make sense and not in a good way. Uh, so, like, this film was written by M. Night Shyamalan, which, you know, I only saw one of his films prior, and that was The Sixth Sense. I did a review on that. If you guys have seen my review, you know I did not like that movie. I didn't care for it. I don't get why a lot of people liked it. Yeah, so that can explain for some of the writing in this film, but to be fair, it's not as bad as it could have been from M. Night Shyamalan. You know, like, I would rather watch this than The Sixth Sense, to be honest, in terms of writing and that. Also, again, while the characters are nice characters and that, and the acting is just nice, it comes off as really bland, generic, and stereotypical. And it doesn't really have that much layers on there for the characters or anything like that. And knowing that, without giving anything away from this film, if you haven't seen it, there's something that happens, like, there's a decision made by, uh, the cat Snowbell that, you know, is so despicable in that, and by the end of it, you know, you're supposed to be rooting for Snowbell. Uh, like, he kind of switches sides a bit at the end, and we're supposed to forgive him for all the terrible things he did. And I'm like, like, that fast at least? I'm like... How the hell did that even work? You know, like, it's... Now, it would be one thing if he did my, like, like, mildly bad things than that, but, you know, uh, he didn't really meant to do those bad things or anything like that, you know, he was kind of forced into these situations. No, he was all willing to do everything he did. And it was out pure hatred and or jealousy for Stuart Little. And we're supposed to forgive him automatically at the end. And I say to that, no. We're not supposed to give him automatically for that. Knowing that there's other stuff too that's cliched. Like you got the stock generic bully uh, during the cell boat scene and that. Which, I mean, he was kind of enjoyable in the sense that it's like he was really acting like he was trying to be like. He, it seemed like this kid was trying to audition to be a James Bond villain. Which, it was a bit over the top in that, but, come on, I'm tired of seeing the stock, generic bullies that have no reason to hate our main characters, except, you know, they're the main characters in that, you know? At least give the bullies more depth. Something, you know? Something, you know? Make them like actual people, instead of just plot devices. And also... Another thing I didn't like about this movie was that this film just was... It just felt like it was being cutesy just for the sake of being cutesy. You know, they could have had some layers to that cutesy, you know, to at least make it, you know, be like... You know, there's a reason we're making it all cute and that, but... No. It just felt like, you know... It just felt manipulative. You know, like... You know, we want to make something that's safe and marketable. And that's what we got. And that's it for my negatives. So with that said, I'm going to give Stuart Little a free out of five stars. Honestly, at the end of the day, I think it's just an okay movie. You know, I it's not as good as I thought it was. You know, like, I don't like this film as much as I did when I was a kid. 
when I was a kid, I loved this movie. This was like, this was like, you know, one of my favorites. Used to watch quite a bit. But looking back on it now as an adult, I see much more of the flaws and everything. And stuff I would have done differently if I was in charge. But there's nothing incredibly offensive about this other than maybe uh, there's a couple curse words here and there. Which I still nothing really all that offensive and that. It's just a, you know, I think it's definitely a movie, you know, you could pop in, show your kids, you know. Or show the family. You know, just whatever, you know. But for me, honestly, I think it could have been a bit more. You know, like, it could have done a lot more with this movie. So that's it for this review. Thank you guys for watching, and see you next time.